Today, Great.com talks with Deb Otis, who is the Senior Research Analyst at Fair Votes. And if you haven't heard of them, they are an organization on a mission to give American voters greater choice and a stronger voice. And if you are new here, please press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we learn the importance of fair voting in America. Hello, Deb, and welcome to our podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. No, thank you so much for being here. It's it's an absolute pleasure. So, Deb, just to start with, for me and anybody that's new here today, what is Fair Vote and what do you do? Fair Vote is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and we research and advocate for election reform, for changes that are needed to improve elections for everyone. Amazing. This is incredible. So please, could you tell me why is this important, Deb? Yes, uh, our biggest area of focus is ranked choice voting. This solves a fundamental problem with American elections. In our, our current elections here in the U.S., once you have more than two candidates running for a position, our election system totally breaks down. Suddenly, voters have to worry about vote splitting between similar candidates. We have to worry that an independent or a third party candidate might spoil the election just by choosing to run for office in the first place. And candidates are more likely to win by uh, mudslinging to energize their base to vote and convince other voters to stay home rather than running an issues focused campaign that connects with a majority of voters. We need to change the incentives that candidates run on in order to make uh, candidates and elected officials more accountable to the voters. And ranked choice voting will get us there. Simply, it allows voters the option to rank candidates on the ballot in order of preference. So first choice, second choice, third choice, and so on. Wow, that sounds absolutely incredible. And yeah, we... With any sort of voting scheme, it's always best to have have it fair for everybody because when people vote, it can often go sort of one sided, and yeah, it's not fair. And then in in my eyes, I've seen almost people they don't actually want to vote because they almost predict the outcome. So, two two questions that I've got, Deb: Would it be possible to give us an example of ranked choice voting, and also leading on to that? Do you ever think some Americans, they don't vote because, because of this sort of um, like winner-takes-all election type thing? Sure. Uh, I'll address the second question first. Does okay. our current voting sometimes prevent people from wanting to vote? And yes, absolutely. We as voters are left feeling like we don't have the choices that we want to see on the ballot. Um, Our elections are becoming more and more polarized and vitriolic, and it certainly discourages voters from coming out to support any of the candidates who are on the ballot. We need a system that welcomes more voices into our elections, and this can help boost turnout by getting voters excited to vote for a candidate rather than just go and vote against someone they don't like. You also asked for an example of ranked choice voting. Uh, The state of Maine in the Northeast United States uh, has used ranked choice voting for uh, since 2018. And we've seen a number of examples for congressional and Senate elections in Maine using ranked choice voting. In 2018, there was a congressional election with a Republican and a Democrat who were considered the front runners for this race but there were also two uh, independent or third party candidates in the election. Now in a non-ranked choice election, voters would have been shamed to not vote for these third party candidates. They would have been told, oh, you're wasting your vote. You need to vote for a front runner. In this election, voters were free to express their honest preference as their first choice. And if if their vote couldn't help that candidate win, that candidate was in last place and didn't have a chance of winning, those voters' votes went to count for their second choice. And so in this way, Maine elected a majority winner. And now that was a congressional seat in 2018. We saw a very similar situation in Maine in 2020 for a U.S. Senate seat. And so we're 
gaining more and more examples of ranked choice voting in practice. There are two states in the United States which have passed this and over 20 cities so far. But one of Fair Vote's big goals is to get ranked choice voting at the federal level, not just state level. Wow, that's 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 wonderful to hear because from my own experience, actually, I've I've noticed people do this and I've actually done it myself too, because when it comes around to voting, maybe you don't like the party that that are there. So you end up almost giving your vote away to say a slightly different party that you didn't really like what they do anyway. So this sort of eliminates that, doesn't it, by the sounds of it. So no, that's absolutely incredible. So for for fair vote, since it's founding in 1992, what have been some of the greatest struggles and how did you overcome them? I would say one of the biggest struggles to passing this election reform is that a lot of people haven't heard of it yet. I think one of the mistakes that American voters tend to make is we think of the way we currently vote as the way we've always voted. And that's simply not true. Even the framers of our constitution hundreds of years ago had the foresight to allow the opportunity for elections to evolve. And we have had a number of election evolutions over the uh, history of this country. But lately, we have been stuck in this winner-take-all plurality elections that are, do not accurately represent the will of the voters. So a huge challenge for us is just uh, sharing the benefits of ranked choice voting, helping more people start to think that we, there are a lot of issues that some of that we want to solve, but electing the right leaders is key to getting all of those other things done. We can change the incentives to make our leaders more uh, representative and uh, make leaders listen to the voters more. And how, how would you change your incentives, uh, Deb? How, how would you change the incentives at all? Ranked choice voting sets up incentives where candidates need to reach a broader group of the electorate. It won't be enough to energize just one small group of voters. In order to win in a ranked choice election, a candidate needs majority support. That means more than half of the voters had to have supported them. And that seems like the lowest bar for a democracy, right? If we're going to put someone in office, they should have the support of at least half of their voters, right? Of and course. so ranked choice voting sets that up right off the bat, and it incentivizes more positive campaigning. Right now, our elections are so negative because when it's primarily a two candidate race, campaigns have an incentive to go negative, to try to demonize the other party and energize their own base. But with ranked choice voting, going negative could cost you second choice votes. So candidates want to connect with voters on the issues rather than just tearing down their opponent. Yeah, that's 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 amazing that you've explained it that way because it makes it more clear for someone like me that's never really heard of this. Uh, also, some of the listeners that may not um, have ever heard of this too. So with the ranked choice voting, Deb, what sort of impact would this have on America as a whole? More representative elections can help us solve a number of our problems. One of the benefits that we've already seen from ranked choice voting in the US is that it increases representation for women and for people of color. And this is an area where a lot of American voters notice that the folks that we elect, our elected officials, don't necessarily reflect the diversity that we have here in the United States. Ranked choice voting can give more of a platform to folks who are not who are uh, outside of the current political mainstream, which is often women and people of color. This can happen because of the issues-focused campaigning, which lets candidates uh, connect with the voters. Uh, this can also happen because ranked choice voting prevents vote splitting, meaning multiple candidates could now run in the same election without worrying that they might divide community support. Instead, they can build community support uh, Throughout this, through this vote transfer process, a voter doesn't need to worry that they can only support one of the two candidates they like. The voter can rank them both. So we see more representative elections and our elected officials need to be more responsive to the voters. There are a number of issues in the United States where it feels like the federal government is unable to solve our biggest challenges. 
So we need to change the game. Yeah, that's 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 so great to hear, and it's amazing that you guys are a part of this whole this whole process. And so, how how are you and Fair Vote part of this solution? Then, for anybody like I say that's new here, how is Fair Vote and you as a person part of the solution? Well, I'll start with Fair Vote, and then we can talk about my role. Yeah, uh, Fair please. Vote has been involved in the fight for ranked choice voting for decades, and we have seen a number of big wins. Uh, getting us uh, since 2004, when San Francisco adopted ranked choice voting, and they were the only one in the U.S. Since that time, uh, 17 years ago, we now have over 20 cities uh, already using ranked choice voting, and another 20 uh, that are going to adopt it. Uh, this fall for 2021 elections. And so Fair Vote has been a part of that by uh, working on some of these campaigns, but even more so by supporting local activists on the ground. Uh, local ranked choice organizations in cities and states often know the uh, political situation in their, in their uh, area. And we can support them by providing resources uh, and providing data and providing talking points to help uh, to help them win their local campaigns. And so we are often in a supportive role as folks win these uh, win these fights locally, while Fair Vote focuses largely on winning at the federal level. So we are developing congressional allies. We are driving a positive narrative about how ranked choice voting works in practice. And there's a lot of good news on that front. Uh, this brings me to your second question about how I personally am involved. Uh, my role is as a research analyst at Fair Vote. And this means I dig into election data. So I look at non-ranked choice elections. I look at how they're not working, the problems with those elections. And then the really fun part, I get to look at all of the results from the ranked choice voting elections that we have had, analyze those results to understand better what's really going on. And so when we have findings like women and people of color are doing better, or we have we learn about how well incumbent politicians fare under ranked choice voting and things like that. This is the, an area where I can contribute to the body of research and the growing number of RCV elections in the US. Wow, that's absolutely incredible, Deb. And yeah, I just, I just want to thank you for, on behalf of everybody, especially the Americans, because what you're doing is, is absolutely amazing. And everybody deserves to have a fair vote, right? And it sort of eliminates that just voting just for the sake of voting. And then because you are going back to what you said earlier, some people may get elected. However, they've only got, say, a 30, 40, 50 percent of the vote. So it's not a true win in my eyes. Um, so. Please, can you explain what the Fair Representation Act is, Deb? The Fair Representation Act is a form of proportional ranked choice voting for the U.S. House of Representatives. Right now, our nation is the most polarized that it has been in our lifetimes. And this is because of the way that we elect our, our Congress. We use winner-take-all elections in gerrymandered polarized districts. And so what does this do? It incentivizes candidates to listen to a small sliver of their base, of their one party, the most active voters from one party, rather than representing all constituents. What this means is millions of Americans effectively have no voice in Congress. Millions of us are, support one political party, but we live in a congressional district that is a safe district for the other party, meaning there is almost no chance that, that our party could win. And this, this is true of millions of Americans, and it feels like we are locked out of representation. So the Fair Representation Act solves this problem with a, a three-pronged approach here. One is multi-member districts instead of single-member districts. This means you know, a state who currently has nine representatives elected from nine individual districts, instead, they could have three larger districts that each elect three members. So the state still has nine representatives, but they're each elected within a multi-member district. And now that means most Americans would be represented by multiple Congress people. And this means more of a chance for every one of us to be represented by someone who shares our views and to feel like we're being heard. And we have a Congress person that we can call that is 
advocating for our issues. So multi-member districts make a big difference. And the way that we elect those, second prong of the three-pronged plan, we elect those with multi-winner ranked choice voting. So just like the, uh, the single winner version that we've been talking about today, this version also elects candidates uh, who are more representative of the voters. So that's prong two. We got multi-winner districts, ranked choice voting, and then prong three is uh, independent redistricting commissions. So we are going to uh, try to get away from the partisan gerrymandering. Now, luckily, these multi-member districts mean there are a lot fewer district lines to draw. In almost half of the states, they wouldn't need to draw any districts because say a state electing only three representatives, they will elect them all statewide, solved gerrymandering there. Uh, but in some of our larger states, we would still have to draw districts, but we'll do that with independent redistricting commissions rather than through a partisan legislature or a partisan process. And so this means more fair districts. And so those are the three mechanisms where the Fair Representation Act is going to fix the polarization and unrepresentative nature of U.S. Congress. Wow, that so, sounds so clear. And thank you once again, Deb, for sharing that with us, because it's nice how you guys have just broke it all down into, like I say, the three separate categories there. And yeah, I think it will help generate much fairer voting because it just seems so so clear in in that way that you explained it today so no thank you deb so just finishing up here today as we finish one of the final questions that i wanted to ask you was what is fair votes vision for the future well fair vote wants to pass the fair representation act within 10 years so this is our vision for the future. We think we can have a proportional democracy in the United States that is reflective of the people's wishes, and we can get there this decade. How do we do it? Well, it involves winning a lot of, uh, a lot of smaller victories along the way to build up to this victory within 10 years. So we are looking forward to more state and municipal wins. We are looking forward to some legislation in Congress that can incentivize RCV, like make it easier for cities and states to opt into this, like a provision in the current legislation, the For the People Act, HR1, uh, which ensures that cities and states who are upgrading their voting equipment use ranked choice capable equipment. And so things like that can help us get there. Thank you once again, Deb. And as we're finishing right now, anybody else say listening today, what, what can somebody do to help and what action steps can they take to be a part of the solution, Deb? Well, I think it would be great if everybody listening can take one or two actions to help improve our elections. So uh, an important one is to figure out if there are local campaigns in your area working on ranked choice voting. Uh, we have a list on Fair Vote's website. If you go to fairvote.org, there is a link for Get Involved, and you can find the local campaigns in your area. Find out what those folks are doing. There might be simple ways you can help, like calling your legislator to help advance state-level legislation, or perhaps getting involved in other volunteer activities with that group. Making these local wins happen is a really important way that we can advance the movement. And I would definitely encourage you to connect with your local campaign. Deb, thank you so much for being here today. I've really, really enjoyed it. And I've learned a lot from you because I personally didn't know any of this before. So I'm hoping that some of our viewers and listeners will take a lot away from this too. So for you listening, if you've enjoyed this, please press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. That will show the algorithms that this is an important conversation so more people can learn the benefits for fair voting.